Hello, and welcome to my Manjaro GNOME setup tutorial, which suits also for Manjaro's like KDE, XFCE, and others. Here I assume that you already have Manjaro installed, but you do not know where to go and how to make it your comfortable everyday go-to system. In this video I'll cover some basic Manjaro features, what to look out for, what software is essential and useful, and some other cool Manjaro tips and tricks. I'll be using Manjaro GNOME, but you're free to use any other graphical user interface. So, let's get right to work. Alright, let's begin with some Manjaro basics. Firstly, before we do anything, after your Manjaro installation, you should install some things. So, you go ahead and open your terminal and write these lines. It's the first one. sudo pacman-s fake root between tools patch. What does this line mean? sudo is you're installing it as an administrator, pacman is the package manager that will install some software to you, hyphen s uh, states that you need to, that, that the software needs to be installed, and this is the name of the software. So you press enter, it will ask you for your password, you give it your password, you proceed with installation, and there you're good to go. After that you need to install some something that's called make, so you just type sudo pacman hyphen s make, you proceed with installation, and you're good. Next you need to type where is it? sudo pacman hyphen s paste well, you type enter, you proceed with installation, it will install everything to you, and then you're also good. Keep in mind that for you these installations will take quite a lot of time because I already have all that installed on my PC. But basically what we just installed is some quick to go like useful things for us to configure our system later. Alright, now how do we use Manjaro, how do we like start getting comfortable with it? Well, Manjaro is a rolling release, so it means that the system should be updated by you and only you and Manjaro won't update itself like automatically like Windows does. So. To update your system, and I recommend you do it at least once a week, because if you will not do it, your system may crash after you, like, you haven't updated for like a year, and you want to update, your system may crash be before, because of some conflicts. So that's why we want to firstly clear our terminal, and uh, type a command sudo pacman slash syu or sui, it doesn't matter. What does this mean? sudo, as I already said, is an access from like administrator, so you download your updates as an administrator. Pacman is a package manager which installs the updates, and this text means that you should update your system and not install software. So if you press enter, it will just like look for some updates. There actually are some updates, so it will go and install them. Alright, so now you know how to update your system. And now let's start with some basic commands you need to use and you'll use every day on Linux. Well, to begin with, there's a command shut down now, which just turns off, turns off your PC. Or an, an alternative to it is systemctl power off. This is all just really to personal preference. I prefer using both of them. Both are good. Also, there's a command reboot, which reboots your PC. Another command is make a dir, which which get which lets you make a directory. Another command is ramdir, which removes the directory. Ls shows the, all of the folders or files in a certain file. If you want to copy file, you type cp from to, so like copy from location to location. The same if you want to just move file from one location to another, it's not cp but move and we. And if you want to remove a file, you just type a RAM file name. Obviously, like here is the file you want to remove. But be careful, this command is very dangerous, and you should really avoid using it unless you're sure that the file you you can remove, like you can remove the file, because you may remove the whole like your whole base directory, and your system won't run at all. So be careful with that command. The next command, pwd, which prints the working directory you're in. The full path to it, c slash home addon. I'll talk about the whole file system a bit later. Which command just shows you where something is located. For example, if I want to locate my Python interpreter, 
it will print to me where that interpreter is. It's in user bin Python, so that's quite easy. Who am I? Just print the user. Currently my user is Adion. And if you want to create a file, you just put like, let, let me go into a directory, for example, CD desktop. Alright, for example, I want to create uh, some certain file. And I type touch, touch file.txt. And by the way, Linux does not need the, like, the extensions. You can just like make touch file and it will be a text file anyway. But we'll put txt for it. I created a, a file and now if we look at all of the files at my desktop, it's, the, it's that file. If I want to write something to that file without opening it, I can just do echo some gibberish. Just like that. If I run it, it's fine, nothing changed, but this this text was written to a file, and if I want to view a text from a file, I just put cat file, oops, file.txt, see, and it prints like the context, context of file. It's basically like if you want to view any document or on Linux, you can just put cat and the document name, and it will always work. And also, if you want to like edit this file, you can just type vi. Maybe later Wim, but for now we don't have Wim installed, so we are gonna use just vi. File.txt, and you get a console text editor you may use. To access this editor, you need to type two dots, q, and you are out of it. And as you can see, file is still there, so if I want to remove it, I just type remove file.txt, and it's gone. And just like that, we've covered all of the basic major commands there are. There are obviously a lot more, but I can't cover all of them. And if you want to get help on any of the command, you just type, for example, I don't know, touch command slash h. Oops, there is. Oh, uh, for some program, for some like commands, it's help, and for some commands, it's like this h. If h doesn't work, you then type help. So basically, that's all of the like basic Manjaro commands you will ever use like I mean obviously there are a bunch more but these are just like the basics you will use on your first days of Manjaro usage. Alright now if you talk about the simple Manjaro utilities that are already there installed for you to, to use one of the best ones is a screenshot utility which lets you screenshot any part of the screen and just like copy it to clipboard or like save it in pictures and make it everything like to your liking and speaking of saving it to a file let's talk about the file system a bit here file system is much different from windows don't know about mac basically what you have is you have all of these directories and if we go to terminal i'll clear it one second So if I go to, this is a slash directory, and it's basically the main directory from which all of your system is placed. If I check all of the files in this directory, we'll see that there are a lot of different files like bin, boot, dev, etc, home, lib, and much more. All of these files are actually like system files, except for the home file. The home file is where you like store all of your files, all, all of your data, and you shouldn't ever touch any of these other files if you don't know what you're doing. So we're gonna go to the home directory, and it's in the home directory there are two files, it's the user, mine's named Adion, and a lost plus found fi like file. Uh, lost plus found is a folder which contains all of the files that were like lost during like that are maybe like lost or corrupted and are pending to be restored. So you to store your files, you need to go into your user directory, and when you're in it, you're gonna like get instead of like the name of the directory a curly line here. So if you're here and if there's like a home icon, that means you are that you are in home directory, and you can just like here you can keep your files everywhere you'd like, you can create like new folders, download stuff there, and everything will be amazing. Alright, as I was talking, screenshot utility is incredibly good. And moving on, another good utility is an install, like add removed software utility. 
This is a great utility to like quickly install and remove software, but if we talk about the installation, there are actually a much better way to do it. But if you want to remove your software, this is one of the best ways. And also this is a good way to discover new and open source programs. Another two apps that are really good are called Settings and Twigs. Let me go here. Settings. This is basically you configure whole, like those little things like Wi-Fi, network, Bluetooth and all of that. And while we're here, one thing you should do right off the bat is to go to keyboard shortcuts, go to the very bottom, plus sign, give it a name terminal, a command is gonna be gnome slash, oops, gnome, sorry, I can type gnome slash ter, gnome terminal, and you need to put a shortcut that you will, will use like probably most of the time to open your terminal, the shortcut needs to be very comfortable for you, I suggest putting a shortcut Ctrl Alt T. It's just like the best one out there. So if I add it and now I press Ctrl Alt T, this terminal opens. This is great. And I highly suggest you learn some of these shortcuts or practice on your own shortcuts because using shortcuts is like the biggest thing in Linux overall. It's very comfortable and very intuitive. And also another program to configure your system is called Weeks, right here. This is more of a like general like graphic interface tweak. For example, you can see here like appearance, you can change the cursor, the fonts, keyboard mouse, like top bar, everything you'll see here. You'll understand it, it's very intuitive, so, so that's great. And another thing that I want to talk about is a very useful program called Firewall. Here, Firewall configuration, you need to enter your password before you go in there. And here there's firewall, you need to just enable it, and it's like a great antivirus program just built in Linux. So that's all of the basics already installed features that uh, Manjaro gives to you. And now let's talk about some programs that you should download yourself to make your system just like look and feel better. Alright, so I'm going to divide the software we install into three categories. The first one is essential, second one is basics, and the third one is like comfortable programs which are very useful to have on your system. So starting with essentials, the first one is Yay Package Manager. Because if you don't know, on Manjaro you can't just install programs from, from the internet, so you need to install Yay Package Manager. How do you do that? Well, you open up a terminal, then you freaking google it, why not? So what you do is you basically clone a, re a repository from a, from GitHub to UCA. You type in this. If you want to uh, get like the link, you may you can just type in Google like how how to install EA in your system, and the first site will have the link. You type firstly the first link. I'm going I'm not gonna type it because I already have it installed. Then you go to the EA folder. Then you type CDEA. And after that, when you are in the EA folder, you type make package slash si to create basically EA for you to use. Once you install the EA package manager, your life becomes a lot easier. Because right now, instead of doing this, and then the name of the program, you just do this. And then the name of the program. So that's kind of a cool thing. And let's install our first useful program we're going to be using. So the first program we're going to be installing is called HTOP. It's one of the essential programs for you to track all of your like processes. And here, as you can see, I typed yay HTOP and we've got a bunch, we've got like a, what, 20 different options. Here you need to choose a correct option for yourself. A quick guide to it, uh, usually options that are community and extra are easily downloadable and from our or Arch user repository they are downloaded a bit harder. Uh, that's because from community and from extra you already download compiled code but from our your computer has to compile the code itself. So that's why like it's it's harder for your computer and it takes much much longer. So you ideally want to take 
uh, programs that's from community or extra. And also, before you download any any program, you need to read a short like a short one sentence what what this program is. I'll probably use uh, this first one in, in interactive interactive process viewer. So if, when you want to install it, you just type in one. You give it your password so you can install it as an administrator. Then you just type in yes, and that's it. You install the program. Now we have HTOP, and uh, as I already said, this is a system like uh, a process viewer. By default, you have installed a program called Top, which tells you how much your CPU, memory is like overall like if it's like cramped or, or no, but it does like really look nice and it's it's not that good. So that's why we have HTOP, which is much more... What? No. No, I don't want to. Okay. Uh, and now we have HTOP, which is much more beautiful and colorful, as you can see. I can see my memory usage, I can see each core of my processor being used, I can also see how much of my swap is being used, and uh, a lot of different things, like each process that I have right now running, everything, it's just like here, it, and it looks quite beautiful, so if you want to see how much RAM your computer is taking, just, start, you just like go here, open terminal, oops, go here, open terminal, type htop, and you're good to go. Another program for the essentials, like from the essential programs, is called Wim. I think a lot of you heard about it. Let's install it. It's a highly configurable text editor, which, in my opinion, every programmer should know how to use. Let's read it here. We are improved, a highly configurable improved version of the UI text editor. Yes, that's what we want, and it's from Extra, so we install it. We give it our password. We press yes and now it's gonna install it I'll probably cut it because it's gonna take a long time it wasn't long and now Wim is installed and now you can if you go to your overall programs you can see you have GWIM and Wim what Wim basically is, is it's a console text editor it's a bit hard to get used to but if you do get used to it you will be very effective and very productive at coding and and a lot of different things I can guarantee you that Alright, so that was it for the like essential programs you definitely need to have when running Manjaro. Now let's talk about your basic favorite programs that you use almost every day on your like other operating system. For browser, I recommend installing Chromium or Firefox using Yay. For uh, like for reading Office Office files or Microsoft Office prog programs like Microsoft Word files, Microsoft Excel files, PowerPoint files. By default, Linux cannot read those, Manjaro cannot read those either, so we need to install LibreOffice. This is a very good software for reading all of the Office programs. If you want to do some image manipulation, the best thing to do is to install GIMP. It's, it looks like this, GNU Image Manipulator, hence GIMP. You also install it with CA. If you want a great media player, I suggest VLC. If you want a great program for recording something, I suggest OBS Studio, and if you want to write a ton of code, obviously our favorite text editors like West Code, Atom, Sublime are all available on Linux, our favorite IDEs like PyCharm, C-Lion are available as well, if you want to do some video recording, I suggest you do it with OpenShot, and that's kind of it for all of the basic software I could think of. If you want like some more if you want some more software from me you can just like write it in the comments down below. But the software is just like really that easy, you can you just like go into your terminal and type yay, for example, what, what to install. Let's install like I don't know, open shot. It's a video editor. I see like a community build open shot, a video editing animation playback library. Oh it's it's a library, see? It's not a video editor. So we should install that. Video editor is all the way here. An award winning free and open source video editor. So we type 3. And yeah, I think I forgot to close another instance. Hold on. What is this? Oops. I'll just like close it. Yes, now, now it should work. 
and the installation begins. It's gonna take a long time, so I think I'm gonna just cut it. Easy, just like that. Now we have... Why don't... Okay. Now we have ourselves an open shot video editor, which works. So it's like, it's really that easy. The, the, like the, the benefits of Linux are that you don't have to complete all those like fancy wizards that you do on Windows. Linux does all of it for you and it's very comfortable and very useful. And now let's get to, I'd say, one of the most useful points of this video, because right now I'm going to present you with some very useful and interesting software that's very comfortable for like any Linux user and, and that really boosts your productivity on Linux. The first, uh, I guess it's not quite a software I'm going to talk about is, oh my Z sh. It's a, it's like another terminal for Linux because this terminal, to be fair, is ugly and it's very very uncomfortable to use. Oh my Z sh. I actually know how to read this. It's really, it's much better. I'm, I'm not gonna go on through the installation of it. You can easily Google it on the internet because it, like it takes a bit of time. But I'll show you what it looks like. And just like that, see, my terminal looks much better now as you can see it's like there isn't like this those home buttons everywhere it's, it's much more comfortable when you want to like if you do ls when you want to like move into some directory it just actually like shows which directory you're on because the previous one did not show that so that's why oh my zhc yes so that's why this Terminal is very useful and also one of the most useful things here is there are a bunch of plugins for it so you can like so you can change like reboot like the reboot command to a SIA command just like that. I have it changed on my on my laptop and it's very very cool and useful. The second very useful program I'm going to talk about is called ULauncher. You should, you should not sleep on this program, it's one of the best programs actually there are for Linux. It's, it's just like, it's perfect. And now you're gonna see what I'm talking about. It's very easy to install and if I launch it, I, I think by default it's like Windows, no, it's con I think it's like Control Space. Two times. No, it's not. Okay, I'll, I'll launch it in this way. It's called U Launcher. Yes, control space, space, okay. This is basically gives you easy access to any of your file system, like see if I type a letter and any file is it's written here. And what is better like about this than than the default search is that it can actually find you websites. For example, if you want to go to Stack Overflow, you can, you know? And that's and, and that's, that's actually really cool. And uh, I, what I highly suggest you do right now is you go into settings and quickly give it a good like hotkey. For me, the best hotkey is Ctrl Alt R, and also you can just like get into the settings and do everything that you want here. The next program is called Stacer, and it's also a very useful program. Let me just install it. Boom! Just like that, we have it installed now. And if I launch it. By the way, you can't launch some programs from here. Not all of them, but some of them you can. And this is basically HTOP, but a lot better. You can see literally everything you have on your system. You can see how like all of it works. You can see your CPU, like how much disk is used, how much memory is used. You can also clear up some startup applications. You can also like clear up all of your systems there are a bunch of features here so that's that's quite cool and by the way while i'm here uh, startup applications remind me reminded me of something you can't use microsoft programs on like powerpoint or excel on linux uh, and and as i already mentioned LibreOffice has a lot of alternatives to it but you can use microsoft teams that's what's important to know. the next program is called time shift this is basically a program that allows you to create backups for your system. Let me show you. 
So, for example, if you want to change something in your system and you don't want to lose everything you have right now, you can just create a snapshot here. I'm not gonna actually create it. What 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 what, what just happened? What what the hell? Wait, what? Alright, so I already finished recording the video and I just understood the time shift broke everything and the rest of the recording is just a black screen. Well, I got to record now and I'll get right to the things that probably catches your eye. What are those? What's that? How do you get that for yourself? I do get an eye pointing on your cursor. Well, these are called widgets and you can easily install them by going into your Chrome or Google Chrome and adding a GNOME shell extension to your Google Chrome and then you can just here search different extensions for example a binary clock right here and you can just put it on install it and now you got a binary clock I actually don't want a binary clock but but I got it and I mean it's, it's, it's literally that easy and these things install literally the same so you should really really check it out and it really like overall helps you build your system and helps you work and this eye is quite good as well and so after time shift I ideally wanted to showcase to you another thing called simple note and this is just like an, a cool honorable mention because this is a note software that's compatible on iOS and Droid Linux, Windows and Mac. I haven't like gotten to experience that at all. It's like it's it's just very useful notes for yourself and, and that's that's actually very cool. So you should definitely use it. The next problem on our list is a very, very useful program for any Linux user. It's called PopCycle or just USB Flasher. As you can see, uh, you can just add an ICO file in here then choose the USB and it will create a bootable USB drive for you so if your system just like breaks you must have a bootable USB drive near you so you can boot on your system and uh, and restore it and by the way I haven't explained explained what time shift does it basically creates snapshots that you, that you can restore your system from later and also probably the last thing I'll, I'm gonna talk about for today is Fusuma this is basically a gestures like thing for Linux. If you want to have your gestures like you do have them on Windows, you can install Fusuma and be happy. But keep in mind, configuring it takes a lot of time and effort and it's actually pretty damn hard. So I guess that's all we've come to the end to the, of this tutorial. I hope you've learned a lot here. I hope you now know how to get at least a bit more comfortable with Manjaro. Keep in mind that all of that takes a lot of work and effort to get used to. It, for, for me it took like probably a good month to get really comfortable with it. And now I just don't boot Windows at all, even though I have it. Right, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and comment if you like this type of content. We do, as you can see, videos on this channel don't come out very soon. So don't miss any of them. Also leave a comment down below if you have some questions on this topic. And I'll see you very soon. Bye!